Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. We're tackling the war between the sexes today. What's the source of the problem, and what can we do about it? Here to help us is a return guest. Monoke Oshana is the author of Dear Man. She's an Assyrian Christian born in Iraq. She speaks to us today from the studios of KXEG in Phoenix. Mona, I enjoyed talking with you last time when we discussed your previous book, Look Beyond the Fire. Thanks for visiting with us today. It's my pleasure as always, Steve. Thank you so much for giving us the platform and to be able to uh, raise our voice and to speak to you. It was a pleasure talking to you. Mona, how did men treat women when you were growing up in Iraq? Well, growing up in the Middle East, I was born in Iraq. And I'm a Christian, obviously, and our faith teaches us that, of course, we are equal in the sense that each one of us, according to our gender, God has a purpose and a mission for each one of us. But living in a Muslim world that dominated and stifled the voice of the woman, that actually came into our faith and our culture. It made us so that the Christians themselves were almost following the Islamic faith more so than we were in the Christian faith. And so the disappointment, really, and the sad part is women were stripped of their full potential. They were not able to reach their full potential living in Iraq or, you know, in the Middle East, as many of you know, that today in Saudi Arabia, women can't even drive. Wow. You cannot go to the market without having a male accompany you. And so it wasn't that bad in Iraq. But nevertheless, today we're seeing, and and I'm surprised to see this, more people wearing the hijab in Iraq today than they have ever worn it. You moved to a completely different environment in the late 70s when you arrived in the United States. Despite obvious improvements in the status of women, you found many of the same underlying problems. Would you explain? Coming to America, we were somewhat restrained as a Middle Eastern community because we knew that our people were still under bondage in Iraq. So we didn't quite find our voice just yet after immigrating to the United States. But we also saw that there was still a marginalization of women, even though we were living in one of the greatest countries in the world. We were still seen as minorities. We were still being seen as you will speak to when you're spoken to. In the workforce, in the church, in many of the political or social gatherings, we saw that Women, even though we were in America, were still being marginalized. They were still being stifled. They were still being set back to say, you can only go so far. Many people have quoted this, have said this. There was sort of a glass ceiling. You could see your potential, but you couldn't go further than that glass. And you couldn't punch through it, and you couldn't go through it. And it was a struggle. So there was that same kind of a struggle in a different way, obviously. It wasn't as fearful. There wasn't that fear of being killed, being jailed, or the government coming against you, knocking on the door and saying, you've overspoken, because the government did have that kind of control in the Middle East. In the West, it's more subtle, but I found that a woman was still being marginalized. Let's get to the cause of the problem. When did this war between the sexes begin? In my book, Dear Man, I um, choose a time in the Bible that many have read And I wanted to concentrate on this part of the Bible, which is Genesis 1, 2, and 3. I truly feel that during this time, when Adam and Eve came against each other because of the fact that they ate of the forbidden fruit, that there was an animosity that actually was created as a result of their betrayal of each other that was never gotten over. I know there will be enmity between the seed of the woman and and the seed of the serpent, But nevertheless, I think we lost our friendship in the garden. I think we left our friendship in the garden. I really, truly feel that the war of the sexist or the gender conflict that we face today is at one and the same. And unless we go back to the garden and we read Genesis 1, 2, and 3, and we understand how we have been marginalizing each other or manipulating each other, because it's not just a man dominating woman. A woman's been manipulating the man as well. And we have actually been fighting. We have been infighting. There was an infight. There's a conflict between the genders that unless we are able to understand it, that we are able to solve it. But of course, the first thing is to understand that there is a conflict. Rather than working with each other, we're working against each other. I appreciate the material you quoted from psychologist Dr. Michael Connor. Based on what you learned from his perspective, 
How are men and women different in the way they think? The man uses one side of the brain and the, and the woman uses both sides of her brain. I start in the beginning to say that man was all in one. Man was all together, and then we were separated. When God separated us, of course, according to the Bible, he separated the different talents and the different characters that we have. Woman's more emotional. Man is more logical. Woman speaks more, is more verbal. A man is more, speaks less, but of course he's, he's you know, bottom, kind of a bottom line human being. For example, a man will call a woman a nag because she speaks so much. And a woman will say, well, you don't understand me. You, you're, you're not speaking in the language. So there's that language barrier. And so a lot of the marriage psychologists will speak on the lack of communication. So there is a bridge that was broken between man and a woman. Rather than complement each other, they've come against each other. Mona, you take a unique approach in your writing style. Each chapter is written in the form of a letter from a woman to a man. You help us to visualize Eve writing to Adam about the blame game. How would you summarize her universal message into a few words? The non-understanding is coming from the fact that there's no patience. The lack of patience is not just coming from man. But it's not being able to put up with each other on both sides. So it's not just a blame game from a woman to a man. But coming from a perspective of a woman, I would say that a man no longer has the patience to listen or to put up with what a woman wants to express. As it turns out, your answer to the war between the sexes is also the answer to the rest of the problems men and women face. What is it? Having faith in God and understanding your purpose and your mission. If we work against each other, we do nothing but have an imbalance. So it is a cooperation. It is working with one another and understanding our mission in life and our purpose. Men have actually have given up their throne, as I, as I mentioned in my book, have given up their leadership throne, their leadership position, and allowed, as we see in, in, in our society today, single moms, single parenthood, family unit being broken up. So the family that was created by God in Genesis 1, 2, and 3 has been broken. Here's something I want to know. Do you have any examples of how men and women have used the message in your book to turn around their marriage? Absolutely. I've had many women that have come and said, you know what, I'm more patient with my husband. Men, they've actually come to terms with saying, I don't see my wife as a threat. But after reading my book, they've realized there is no threat between them. There is a partnership, really. They've seen the partnership rather than the threat. That's great. Mona, I've enjoyed talking with you today. Thanks for the visit. Thank you, Steve, as always, and looking forward to speaking to you more often. Mona Oshana is the author of Dear Man. It's available from major booksellers. You can hear her program, The Mona K Show, on KXEG, 1280 AM. The Trumpet. It's on from 4 to 5 p.m. Thursdays, Arizona time. If you live outside the Phoenix area, you can listen online at 1280trumpet.com. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. 